Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this week's episode of the MBG Podcast. I'm your host, Matt, and this week I'm also joined by Marcus and Mike. You said his name first. I know. I'm very disappointed. That's okay. I gotta change it up. It's been, what, fucking 39 times that I've said it with you first? Well, it's an order of importance, so yeah. No. How's it going, Marcus? Yeah, same old. Same old. Mar- Mike, how's it going? Yeah. Yeah? Uh-huh. That's pretty good. Uh-huh. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Moving on. <laughs> All right. Cool. Getting it right into it. Right into it. Let's Moving jump on. right into the nose. Into <laughs> the nose. <laughs> nose are we jumping into, you creep? <laughs> Mike's making it weird, dude. Mike's Mike making it broken today. Fucking, <laughs> fucking weird, dude. It's okay, Mike. Don't worry, don't worry about it. You're, you are a good individual. Yeah, Mike. Right? Happy Family Day. Yeah. For all of you oh, who yeah, don't know, thing. Family Day is in Canada. It's today. That they it's actually not only Canada, it's only specific provinces. No. Yeah, well, I mean, like British I mean, Columbia had a well last Monday. Last mm-hmm. Monday, and then this Monday, it's us and here and. It's pretty much like we needed a holiday because they have America's President's Day right now, don't they? We're not going to tell you where we're from, but Ontario. But we're going <laughs> to keep gonna it. tell you where we're, we're from, but here's where we're there. from. No, no, no. I mean, like, listen, Ontario is a big province. Good things okay. grow in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke no one will get. Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> we're not going to tell you where exactly we're from, but. You don't know. Fucking. I expect him to just say the city right after that. Too, no, no, like, no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm good though. Thanks. <sighs> How was this week, boys? Any? I know you beat Celeste. Um, I'm playing playing it. You? What are you doing? You played nothing this week. No, Mike played his Overwatch placement matches. <laughs> Yo, fucking... I'm almost at Diamond, bro. Like, I'm I'm moving up, moving up those ranks. You're pretty bad, honestly. No, I'm good. I'm good. Sure. Not even playing Zinyata. Yeah. It's really the only one we can play anymore. Yeah, because Mercy is just dead in the ground. And everyone wants to, everyone picks their DPS immediately. Yeah. So. What do you mean? I thought Zenyatta was a DPS. He is. He is. That's yeah. why he's the, the best support to pick, because you're basically still playing DPS while not playing a DPS. Damage yes. per second. Mm hmm, mm hmm. I know what that means. Exactly. It's a personal computer player. Yep. Oh, yeah. PC. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Solid. You have a Mac, and you have a Surface. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. These are facts. It doesn't count for you, Mike. Marcus, on the other hand. It's like the fucking, I don't know what that is, but all right. Yeah, man, go to the app store and play Team Fortress 2. I don't know. Yeah. Let's get right into it. Um, got a whole bunch of news. Not really. Just a whole bunch of long articles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> still news. Yeah, still news. It's not that much, but, you know. Um, let's start. Marcus is going to lead us this week in the news. Um, in the news, because I know that you enjoy it when I say it that way. Oh, because Matt was illiterate last week. <laughs> I was extremely illiterate. I think I should be fine this week. I haven't stuttered too much, so. But I'll jump it's right fine. into the nose. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that's Gu- gonna be a running guilty thing. Guilty as charged. That's gonna be a running thing. Yeah. Mark Mike has a pretty big nose. Do I? Yeah. Oh yeah. I know. I think I might have the biggest nose. You have a very wide nose. I know. Yeah. You know on the Me channel where it's just like it basically looks like two balls mm-hmm. and then a fucking stick yeah, in the middle. You, that's not it's my like nose. A, like a penis nose. You, yeah, you got a dick like the tree nose. trunk nose. <laughs> yeah, yes. like a tree trunk nose, like a fucking yeah. <laughs> I'm about that man. All right, sure jump right into the. Come on, jump right into the nose. Let's go. Jump right in. Number one. <laughs> God. Number one. Uh, Number first... one in the sun. Sunwingvacations.com. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna talk Sorry. about the potential of Spyro the Dragon trilogy remaster. I fucking love Spyro, dude. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> The, this comes from Kotaku UK, Kotaku UK when it was actually broke by uh, Laura Kate Dale. Mike, you're probably familiar with her. Oh, I know Mike's saying no, I don't know. Not why. a fan. Why? Because there was that time when she kept saying all those rumors with, about uh, Nintendo or something. And like she was so adamant that Mother 3 was going to be a thing too. That was no, but wrong. she is right at some stuff. So. Yeah, of course. But she definitely I mean, has some thing, Yeah, here's the thing with rumors. It's hard to find actual news that isn't just all rumors nowadays. Mm-hmm. So, But when someone's reporting it as... We really believe this stuff, and especially in this detail, so I'm just going to read it out to you. This is straight from the Kotaku article. According to multiple sources familiar with the project, Activision is currently working on a Spyro the Dragon trilogy remaster, which will be announced in March 2018 and released in Q3 2018. The trilogy remaster will, much like the highly successful Crash Bandicoot and Sane trilogy, feature new assets, lighting, animations, and cinematics, as well as a remastered soundtrack. It will also feature updates to the save feature, much like occurred in the Crash Remaster, which replaced the original game's password feature with something much more user-friendly. 
The remaster will, incru will include Spire of the Dragon, Ripto's Rage, and Year of the Dragon, and there is the tantalizing promise of some content cut from the original releases of those games. The Spiral remaster will be announced for PS4 with PS4 Pro support sometime in March 2018 and will be releasing in Q3 2018. One source suggested that September would be the launch month, which would be in line with Spyro the Dragon's 20th anniversary. While this detail will not be part of the announcement in March, the game will be a one-year timed exclusive for PS4 before being ported to other systems in 2019. Apparently, the Crash Bandicoot and Saint Trilogy is tied to similar one-year exclusivity window, so expect to see multiple ports of that in 2018. Spyro the Dragon Remastered is currently under development by Vicarious Visions, the same studio who handled Crash Bandicoot and Saint Trilogy. That's a lot of information right there. That was majestic. So, this it's seemingly the exact same rollout. If this is true, of uh, that would that would have happened with Crash Bandicoot. I feel like I gotta believe it. Crash Bandicoot did incredibly well. We know when we play like the that NPD game, you see how much Crash Bandicoot was on that. Yeah, I was surprised they didn't made it on there mm -hmm. at all because it was just it was a fully from the ground up remaster slash remake in some aspects in some aspects and it did incredibly well it came out it was like 40 50 dollars depending where you live it wasn't a fully priced game so that definitely helped it a lot and especially with like the digital sales on like ps4 especially it's been on the psn charts a lot as well is and, that really a timed exclusive uh they yeah because either, activision rumors. is it's owned by activision spyro and yeah, crash yeah. so activision you would assume they don't want to be tied to one platform you that like it's really rare nowadays that we get third parties third party exclusives to one platform mm -hmm. as a, unless it's just like a pre-order bonus or mm -hmm. something like that mm -hmm. so you would have to think like we saw it with what shadow of the tomb raider or not shadow that's like <laughs> wow rise of the tomb Raider. i know I mean, jesus the christ i keep because i'm i'm on that unannounced fucking rumor game um rise of the tomb raider when it was released on xbox and then came, came to ps4 but I don't really think that did Square Enix much, like... Success? Much, yeah, as they would have wanted. But I think, for, like, Crash Bandicoot, you heard people talking about it so much and just selling incredibly well on this one platform. If it comes over to PC, Switch, and Xbox, then it'll do gangbusters, which Activision definitely wants to be everywhere under the sun with their games, so I feel like this... I feel like the, that Crash portion is true. For the Spyro part, I also do believe you would... You would think like or Spyro is heavily tied into yeah, and we're hearing some noises. Spyro is so heavily tied into PlayStation history. Like it launched on PlayStation, it was a PlayStation exclusive developed by Insomniac. So there's just so much lineage with that that, and with the success of Crash Bandicoot, you would think Spyro would be the same, maybe even a bit less. I don't know because they tried it with Skylanders, bringing him back, just t attaching him into that, didn't do anything well for him. They just pretty much like. Let's just let's just freaking bring him back out. Like, bring him to all these children who have no idea who he is. <laughs> I feel I feel like this is happening. It would be cool. Um, um, the only reason I didn't play the like for example Crash is because I didn't have a PS4. I don't have a PS4. But um, if they bring it, I'd play it. Then as a kid, I remember playing Spyro. I would love it. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely love it. And plus, it makes sense with the timeline coming out right too. But continue. Well, that's pretty much it. Just... Yeah. Would you buy it? Absolutely. Did you buy Crash? I want it. I like. I really want it for Switch. That's yeah, thing. that's true. And it, it. Well, we'll see if it does come to Switch. I wonder if the price will be more expensive because it probably will. Switch cartridges. Ugh. But they. But they're still that price on the eShop, aren't they? Yeah. Sometimes they're more expensive on Switch. It's that yeah. Switch tax. Yeah. Switch tax. Damn. It's Mike, that, did you buy it's it? Them gold Nintendo points. No. No. Doesn't interest you. Did you play it as a kid? Did you I, play had, I had I had one of them on GameCube. Mm. I don't remember what like the subtitle was. He's afraid but... of dragons. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I, used to, I played that a bit as a kid, but I didn't really like it. So hmm. I remember just running around the world and just fucking shit up. Like the side of your head hurt. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Damn. I mean, did you hear the sound? <laughs> yeah. I felt the sound. Oh, okay. Felt the sound. Moving on, we'll check back with you in a little bit. Um, number two. THQ mm -hmm. from GameSpot. Yeah, I got this from GameSpot. Uh, THQ Nordic, the Austria-based company currently in possession of the Darksiders, Red Faction, and De Blob properties, have acquired Koch, 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 I don't know, <laughs> Koch Media, 
Jesus. the parent company of Dead Island, Saints Row, and Metro publisher Deep Silver. The deal, which is set for approval later today, was worth 121 million euros, approximately 149 million dollars. The acquisition means that THQ Nordic now owns all of Koch Media's assets, which includes its studios, intellectual properties, and licenses, such as the Metro game series. Koch Media's business also includes films, which are created primarily for German and Italian-speaking territories. Very important right there. Hmm. This is interesting. Hmm. Realistic. I honestly didn't even know THQ Nordic had money to spend. Like, they haven't really been putting out that many games lately. I mean, they've been working on Darksiders 3 and stuff, but, like, I don't even know what else they've been doing. What I find interesting is that, well, THQ, they went bankrupt, cut, like, what, six years ago now, whenever it was, that the U-Draw pretty much just, like, tanked them. Yeah. Um, and then THQ Nordic, uh, they were, like, a different company, but then they, like, formed together because they had a bit of some of the old uh, THQ IP they bring they make this and then they go ahead and buy all of the other thq ip they buy deep silver which i thought deep silver owned all of them but i guess it was their parent company didn't even know they had a parent company but i don't know why you would try and redo history and try and revive a dead company a bank yeah. company that went bankrupt yeah they're basically doing everything over again mm -hmm. so it's going to go bankrupt in about six years <laughs> Or so? It could be. I don't know. The the next game they have is uh, Metro Exodus, mm -hmm. so which looked looked decent enough from the show or the demo they had at the Xbox E three. Yeah. State, well, uh, Metro show. looks cool. They could do another Dark Siders, which I think they're doing. When they are Dark yeah. Siders yeah. three, and right. then a Dead Island as well. I mean, well, I don't there was see why Dead not. Island two that was announced at like what. 2013 14 and just went silent since because yeah. it was being developed by jaeger studios and then they just went um they shut down so nothing ever came from that since i mean it's a possibility right so i just don't know why you would try and recreate a company that went bankrupt it seems like you can there's nothing good that can come out of doing this I don't know, Mike. You're no, in financials. It's, it's their money. Because <laughs> none of the fuck they want. With none it. of these franchises are really. They're not that, relevant like, anymore. Ma like maybe um, Dead Island sells decent enough, and then uh, Saints Row. But when was the last time we got a, Saint, a big Saints Row game? These these used to be very relevant mm -hmm. in the PlayStation Three and Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, you know, era. But as of right now, these these titles are not relevant. So I mean, it's a big risk. Um, unless they come out with a total new IP or maybe a few of them um, with the styles of some of these games. But. Because P THQ fell under because of, or went under because of a lot of mistakes they made and also just how you see that there's no really big double A publisher anymore. And yeah. These, like Deep Silver is pretty, was like, we're going to start doing these more like double A publishing and also a bit of indie. So they did it with, they picked up like Mighty Number no. 9 and whatnot. And Which I, is also a failure. I feel like THQ Nordic is now trying to maybe revive a bit more of that double-A space, which, like, Darksiders and Metro and whatnot, you see that they're actually putting a lot more effort into it rather than, like, they know they want to compete with stuff this year because you can't just put out a game with, like, half the budget or not even, like, less than half the budget and a marketing material and everything of, like, Red Dead Redemption 2 and expect to do well. Yeah. Or a Call of Duty if you're, like, Metro. That's probably who you're competing with, but... Mm -hmm. I don't know. Any thoughts, Mike? No, you guys covered it. Realistically. And finally, something I don't care about, but whatever. Go for it. <laughs> this comes from PC Games N. Uh, PC a, Games N? Mm. What's the N? This comes from PC Games N. <laughs> Story about the first female player joining the Overwatch League. Um, All right, that's cool, so I guess. So, uh, the article uh, reads, The Shanghai Dragons have officially announced their four new Overwatch League signings, including, I'm going to butcher these names, Kim uh, Gaguri Seon, who will become the league's first female player. The team tweeted earlier today to confirm that they have signed four new players to their roster. Gaguri, who rose to prominence as a Zarya main, will be joined by fellow South Korean players Lee Fearless Iwisiok <sighs> and Chan Ado Gihyeon, as well as a Chinese player he, Sky, Juni, Junjian. The four cover the roles of off tank, flex slash support, tank, and DPS, respectively. Uh, I just included this because, yeah, normally if it's like something so specific, I wouldn't do it, but it's like the Overwatch League and finally has a female player. It's really like rare that you ever see professional female esports players. Like, mm -hmm. even you play Counter or you watch Counter Strike, I'm guessing there isn't a single. Um, female player in the like main league that they have right? no i mean they have female or, teams yeah. but they don't have like a female player in the big mm -hmm. uh in the big league i mean now that now that i know what 
this was going. Like I, I'm gonna be honest. I don't care too much about the Overwatch League, but this is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that it's they're open to just, you know, this is a good like this person is a good player. Like we're gonna sign everybody because they have raw talent rather than, you know, an all male a male team or an all female team, right? Yeah. Granted, That's usually how it goes. Granted, um, the Shanghai Dragons are, went like 0-10. Oh, see you later. Yeah, so they, they were like the worst performing team, yeah, but still. You don't have to be very good to be on their team. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. But I think uh, by um, signing her on, they're definitely getting a lot more fans and a lot more attention, uh, which is cool. I feel like, because it, it is boring just seeing like a bunch of just the same dudes playing the team, especially when it's just like, here's all Korean players. It's like, well, it's all the same. Um, yeah, I definitely think people are going to watch the Shanghai Dragons games now just to see. If she plays number one, and if she does play, how well she does, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that'll be interesting to see for sure. I feel like it, it's good to like mix things up, and because esports is so different, where you don't see like the NBA, there's it's men, or you get WNBA, or yeah. same with uh, like whatever other like yeah, they're segregated, like, yeah, like uh, like traditional yeah. sports. Yeah, I think there's a decent like argument to have them segregated, but at the same time, like it's good to see them, you know, get thrown in and see what they can do. Well, in physical sports, I mean, you can argue that like, uh, I don't know, I don't want people to get like super triggered. Like, relax for a second, chill. Listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> on average, on average, usually, no salt. <laughs> usually, okay. <laughs> Women are smaller than men in in their physique correct so if you got a a, a, a fucking chara skating towards some girl yo she's gonna get fucking destroyed this guy's like seven seven foot fucking something i don't know he's massive dude he'll he'll let's all right, all right, all right let's let's level it up level it up level it up i don't know where he's going he didn't even need to go beyond the fact no i didn't however like he's gonna skate toward you mike you're gonna be fucking running that's all i'm yeah, saying all right mike's still holding on to his head so i don't know what's wrong with him <laughs> jesus i think i might know what's wrong <laughs> maybe i don't know but like it's so you some can argue that's the reason um some can argue that it should be it, it shouldn't matter that everybody should play and i'm going to be totally honest with you, if somebody's good enough they should play like it doesn't matter like yeah. who they are um your sexual like it doesn't it doesn't matter that's what i'm saying it does not matter but shut up mike stop fucking laughing I, 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 I see I you laughing anything. at me over here mike's laughing because he thinks you're gonna fuck it up <laughs> yeah, that's a, i'm just dude. waiting for him i'm to trying do so hard dude i'm that's why i'm not saying anything i know bro. like i don't want to risk it but regardless i think it's good i think it's fantastic that it's just like let's sign everybody on i think it's a good thing um yeah like yeah She's good, she'll play. And it's going to attract more of an audience, too. I mean, a lot of people can relate to, like, you know, hey, first female um, Overwatch player, like, let's let's fucking go, dude. Like, and I'm in. we don't see Zarya that much in Overwatch League. So I wouldn't know, so. But, uh, You're but, in, like, one game, and that's it. But now the meta's probably changing, so yeah. she might get in more if they do. Because like, apparently people, there are people who are saying there's going to be, like, a like a trip, triple tank. Is she going for uh, a good meta that's going in? Oh, God, again? Yeah, because oh, you got God. more of just crazy healing. You combine that with like an Ana or a Zen, and you can just heal the tanks like before. But yeah, that's so like, and if that dude. works, she'll definitely play. Because I mean, if she's as good as Azaria as they say, then yeah. I remember playing Overwatch when it was a triple tank. That's when I stopped playing. Oh, that was cancer, dude. Because it was impossible to kill anything. Because like you just have the <laughs> Ana behind them, like healing of the tanks, like it was nothing. She did so much. Healing. I remember running in as a fucking Roadhog, dude. I'd have that healing orb on me, and I have a Mercy following me around, dude. I'm hooking everybody. Like it's not even. I'm insane. That's it. You're insane. So you stop playing. Yeah. Sure why? Because the community's toxic. There's this thing called a mute button. I don't care. This thing called don't play on the personal computer. <laughs> Even on the PlayStation and Xbox, it's still toxic. Yeah. I, I got to diamond rank without ever talking to a single soul in Overwatch. I hate you, Marcus. The reason, like, that's the other thing, so too. I mean, like, I, we, we would play as, um... We would play as a group, and it's just like you wouldn't go anywhere. And then you queue as random, and you would just lose. No matter how much I'd carry, you know, this and that. It was just... Some games that would suck, honestly. But there are some games, like, I'm having the game of my life, and it changes absolutely nothing, right? I mean, I don't know. I, that's why... It, it's just, for me, I prefer a game like Counter-Strike, Global Offensive. You're welcome, Mike. CSGO. Um, yeah. Um, where it's like, you know, your whole team can be shit in the bed, and you can have one good round, and it changes everything, right? That's... I don't know. That's just me, but it's fine. Yeah. Cool. Speaking of, of Counter Strike, let's talk about games that we were playing. And I was playing Counter Strike this week. That's why it's a good segue. But I'm not going to start with that because you know, you know, Counter Strike. So, Mike, how about you start this week? Um, 
So mostly, I've obviously been playing uh, Overwatch, of mm-hmm. course. A lot of competitive Overwatch, actually. Yeah, I actually gained a lot of SR recently. Oh, yeah? Fun. But actually, I started another game that I picked up this week. I only played like 10 minutes of it before I kind of stopped playing. Um, Shadow of the Colossus, actually. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Remastered. Yes, I picked that up this week. And uh, I started playing it, but I couldn't figure out how to kill the first Colossus, so I stopped. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm an idiot. Everybody knows this. Are these millennials playing these games, they don't know anything. Yeah, and like I, I couldn't figure it out, so I stopped playing it. But eventually, I'll uh, I'll get back into it one of these days. Once, special once game. Watch, uh, the, once season 8 probably ends, I'll probably play it. 4 of 8 9. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So once the season 8 finishes, I'll probably play it. That's pretty cool. Marcus? Uh, well, I just wanted to back up. Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, even though you can't kill the first Colossus, don't give up, because that game's real good. Yeah, that's what I heard. I, I heard a lot about it. Even, like, some people I was talking to, like, uh, that, I, that I know, they're saying they really like it. So, like... I'm yeah, you'll have to, like, know. fight cameras and control. I don't know if they really fixed them that much. What, but... I, was, what I was really annoyed by was, like, when you're, when you're aiming with a bow, like, the reticle's always moving. Mm-hmm. And, like, I found that really annoying. Because, like, it was so difficult to aim. Because, like, I've never played a game where, like... It's not it's not straight up, you know what I'm saying? Where like your the aim doesn't just stay in the center and then you move it around. Like in, in the Shadow Colossus it just kinda of goes down or up by itself. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that, but yeah, it was really annoying. I love that game. Matt's so just, it's good. That's just looking up some overwatch stats about Mike. I don't we'll, know why. We'll get we'll get to it later, don't worry. <laughs> stay tuned. Marcus stay tuned. Continue. Uh oh, we talked about last week uh that we would talk about Celeste. Matt said that he would buy it. I did and play it. buy it. I'm about, what, halfway through the game? I think. Give or take? Yeah. I don't know, we were playing it earlier, but I love it. Great game. So do I, I, yeah, I completed it today, actually. Very nice. Uh, it's real fun. It is my game of the year so far. <laughs> it's the only game you've played <laughs> this know. year. Um, so your Shadow of the Boss is my game of the year, then. <laughs> By that logic, I played for like 10 minutes. <laughs> so Celeste in itself, I absolutely love the um, the 8-bit art style, like art style um, with it. I love the little noises and sounds, and I absolutely <laughs> that they Matthew, make when they age talk. age 10, I love, the, I love the noises and sounds. <laughs> this game is good because this game is fun. Anyway, can, did I end up showing you that? I don't remember. Right. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, it's fine. But uh, I, I absolutely love the music. Mm-hmm. The fucking the music, soundtrack oh. is unreal. Like, I'm a big... Majestic. I'm a big... I'm a big person. <laughs> Stop it. I'm a big... Um, Brother. Stop. <laughs> I love the music. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> what? I love the music in games. Um, it really speaks to me. I mean, the soundtrack makes the game for me. Um, can you stop? Please. But, uh, yeah, this game soundtrack is, is fantastic. No, it's so. it excellent. Yeah. Marcus, you, you, beat, you mm-hmm. played more of it, so you explain, in a sense, like, you have a full grasp, grasp of the game, so... I... It's really good <laughs> thanks Mar- thanks Marcus. it's really fun <laughs> and uh so if you don't know celeste it's it is just like a 2d platformer but its whole like shtick is that you have this dash ability that you can i don't know why i'm mass looking up <laughs> pictures of reggie fils me but okay. yeah celeste like the main uh your main uh shtick is that you have this dash ability in which you can dash in eight different directions and it's just a a hard platformer uh if you've been playing like here's the thing it's hard but it is fair i wouldn't compare it to like people have been comparing it to super meat boy it's got some aspects of it i would say but overall it's a bit i would say a bit simpler but it is the game just feels so good it's so precise and they're just looking at my overwatch league stats it's so hard to concentrate <laughs> don't worry about it we'll get to it later stay tuned continue it's so good it like everything just feels great which is like 2d platformers are one of if not my favorite genre and if it if it doesn't feel great then i can't like it's hard for me to continue playing but from the moment i picked up i picked up the controller and started playing celeste like i love the free reign you have over uh, over madeline the character in the game it feels when you're when you're flying through the like mm-hmm. i remember they said this in one of the shows but when you are flying through like a, an obstacle like the course it's unreal like you feel it's super quick Right. I mean, I, lo- I love it, but continue. Uh, if you, I don't want to spoil too much about like concepts or yeah, concepts that he, that show up in different worlds because Matt hasn't played them yet. But there's not really many enemies, 
you find like maybe one chapter where there's a kind of enemy, right? Where it's like the one that you're in now. You face these like little you're the floating pretty, yeah, things. You're not really trying to kill anything. You're trying to escape from them and just trying yeah. to get them not to touch you, basically. Yeah, like you can stall them. But they'll never really go away. Keep in mind, we are explaining this very vaguely because there's a lot of people who haven't played it and I haven't played it like fully myself either. Um, but yeah. but it's also really great because each chapter usually introdu- introduces something new. So yeah. by the end of the game, you're pretty much doing all... You're incorporating everything that you learn from every chapter. So like by the last chapter of the story, you're going through pretty much a gauntlet of everything that you've faced before, which is just so epic. And the game, the way that it is, is it's based off of like each screen, kind of like, kind of like a Zelda, like Legend of Zelda, uh, for NES, where you're going like screen by screen for each challenge. In a sense, yeah, but yeah. they're bigger. So it's not like Mario where you die and then you start from the beginning of the level or a checkpoint. So you just go to this. Yeah, some screens are kind of small and then some screens are pretty big. Like the later you go through the game, the later they expect you to get it in like a perfect run, and the best part about it is that whenever you get up whenever you get to a level or you get to a screen or a stage you're like how the hell am i going to do this and then 30 seconds pass and you're like holy crap i actually made it to the end and dying yeah, is okay there's no learning yeah because matt said it before like going through the air just feels so good it really does like like the way you dash and there's these like like early on you get these kind of like space like vortex yeah. bubbles that give you an extra dash after you go through and it's just like so fluid and everything just feels nice to play mm-hmm. and then you even have these uh, strawberries that are the collectibles in the game and you they're completely just for collectible sake they're, they don't really offer much but they're i i really i would relate them sometimes to the moons and mario of how like fun they are to just get and like find mm. because they really are hidden everywhere there's over a hundred yeah and the chat like throughout the um, throughout me just going straight through the campaign i was like i'm just gonna leave these and then you would see sometimes like in mario i'm like okay fine i'll just pick this one up and then after i'm just there for like five minutes trying to get this one strawberry and it's just yeah because even though nothing's gonna come from it it's just i want it you want, which you is just the best thing a game can do whereas like there's nothing to this but if you can catch me on just trying to prove that i can do something and make me like feel good about it at the end and make me have fun then it's really good yeah uh aside from that each chapter usually has a b like a b side to it which are these cassette tapes that you find in hidden secret rooms in each chapter and the b side is essentially a harder version of that world and they really do like i don't think the main campaign is as hard as everyone makes it out to be but these b sides are what where the real like difficult challenges are like so if if you are a hardcore platformer fan and want something really uh, difficult then you should play you should play celeste just for like the b-sides like at least Mm -hmm. and the kind of spoilery kind of not i'm just gonna say it there there's like other collectibles that you find there's these like big hearts throughout the world you'll just see them you won't know how to get to them but you'll soon figure it out the more you play they it's essentially that it unlocks more uh, like more levels after you beat the main campaign hmm which is like nothing new. It's pretty much like more levels, yay. Um, <laughs> more levels, yay. <laughs> but the, it, it, just even more challenges. And the best part about it is that you're introduced to even more new mechanics that you really? learned in the main uh, story. So that's all I'll leave it at. So there's just so much to play. It took me about just for the campaign, no like B sides or going back for to collect strawberries or anything, about like seven hours give or take yeah i'm around like four hours and the the best part about it is if you want to collect strawberries there's actually like chapter selects in the game where you can just go in get it and without having to go through the beginning of the level all the way to the end without and you you discover like oh crap i missed this one like they tell you uh chapter by chapter how many you've gotten which strawberry it is same with like the b-side cassette tapes and you can easily just like quit out after you've got it so you don't have to complete the level yeah, that's what I like about it. And it's very forgiving. Yeah, too. that the respawn is incredibly fast. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, instantly. It, it has the difficulty of like a classic two D platformer, but it's got the, it's got the mechanics of a modern game where they don't just bog you over the head for dying, like in say like Mega Man or wherever, where you're starting over from the beginning because you fell down. Like yeah, yeah. it's instantaneous. Like Meepoy, like tr- like die, try again, die, try again. 
Exactly. And the, and it literally says, like, the more you die, the more you learn. So dying, they want you to die, basically. And the story is also pretty cool, too. It's nothing, like, major. I would say, yeah, my one gripe with the game, though, I feel like it does end kind of on... They just leave you... Not even leave you hanging. It's just you get to the end, at least what I think, is you get to the end of the game, at least the main story, and you're like, that's it? I feel like it's it was kind of anticlimactic. Hmm. Maybe I feel like that's kind of the way they wanted it to be, but I didn't like it. The at least the resolution. Hmm. So I'll say that for the story one. It went in a total different direction than I thought it would. Mm-hmm. I like I went into this game blind, and I didn't realize this game is about. Um, should we say what what it's about? Yeah, it's pretty, well, it's pretty much the mountain that you're climbing is Celeste Mountain, and it reveals things about whoever climbs it. It reveals things about the people. Pretty yeah, much. I mean, like. Um, like secrets about if you're them come suffering out. different I don't want to give it like away pretty though. much it's how like the main character it's like inferred that she has like depression or some like some illness of that sort and yeah. that you, uh, when early on in the game you're going through and a, like a version of the main character is like she comes out of she pretty much like comes out of her after she looks at herself in a mirror and it's essentially supposed to pretty much be her like her darker emotions, kind basically, of. basically, yeah. And then it it it, sh- it brings to light a lot of darkness within um, the characters. I, I do enjoy it. I didn't know it was gonna go that route, but honestly, I'd like it. I I keep going back to it. That's the biggest thing. Like, um, especially I think it's because it's on the Switch. I can play it wherever I am. But I keep going back to it. I want to finish. The power it. of the Nintendo Switch. You can play anywhere, on an airplane, at an airport. It's like that first Nintendo Switch commercial. Sitting on a park bench with yeah. your dog. For some apparent reason. In the middle of the night. Hmm. Okay, all right. That's fine. And myself, um, Counter-Strike, Celeste, and I played Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein haven't been... Wolfenstein 2? Yeah, Wolfenstein 2. I love it. Absolutely love it. I was going through a level today. I felt so powered, powerful considering I kept dying over and over again. But like, Mike was watching me play it. And it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I don't want to say too much, though, because this game is still fresh and people still haven't played it. But love it. Love killing all the people and the Nazis and stuff because, you know, but it's fucking great, dude. It's fucking great. So, yeah. This game is fun. Oh, yeah, amazing. This game is good because it's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All so. the music and the sounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. So, I'm starting a new segment. Um, we are going to be comparing the Overwatch stats between Mike and Marcus because... Fuck you guys. So we're gonna have a little bit of oh, we're gonna have a little bit of a contest, a little bit of a competition. Um, player who gets the most SR um, in the next month. So March season ends in five days. <laughs> I don't. I have half of the placement matches. <laughs> you tried. The um, look at that record though. No, no, I know. This week, the, like that's what that's what we're gonna be doing. So when does the next season start? I don't know. Okay, perfect. Probably be like two weeks from now. All right, perfect. So when that season starts. Okay, we're going to look, take a look at your stats again, and we're going to um, make a an audible note. Okay. Dot com. Yeah. <laughs> this week's episode is sponsored by audible.com. Um, look at how low my objective time is, man. I gotta get on that payload. Maybe I can we'll... guarantee you I have like five times more. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so we're going to go through your stats today, just to give a little bit of a note going on, and then we're going to look at my old stats, because I got two accounts, as you can go clearly tell. Go to the season tell. before, because I don't even have a rank. Yeah, it's fine. And um, and then when the season starts, we're gonna go through your stats. When the season ends, we're gonna go through your stats and again and see who won. And there may or may not be a prize at the end. Who knows? But it's gonna be a little bit of a game between you two, considering Mike and I have a game. So now we need to find your supply of Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually kind of worried. It says played 13 minutes ago on my name, but like I didn't play 13 I don't know, minutes maybe ago. Maybe someone's uh, your house just taking maybe. over your PS4. I mean, that's possible. Do they play Overwatch? <laughs> Will they play Overwatch? No. Huh. I mean, this That's doesn't this doesn't update. So we're so we're using Overbuff. If you haven't, if you don't know what this is, is a website. Um, I think uh, it started with Dota first. I know there is like a Dota buff, and then Overwatch came out, and then they made this. Um, basically, it's a website where you can put your gamer tag in uh, for every system, and you can bring up your stats online to show and brag to your friends, or to get fucking laughed at like Mike. Dota anyway, booth. Dota booth. Hey, bro, I'm having pretty good. Look at that hero, Actually, right? Mike, yeah. 72%. That's not bad. So we're going to be looking at... Oh, you, and and the, So the thing is, you guys need to play competitive. We're not going to go... boy doesn't play competitive, yeah, well, so... <laughs> well, you got to start playing competitive, sir. My internet's not good enough for that. <laughs> Come on. I play Dota competitively. Hell, yeah, do you? I'm all about that defense of the ancients. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly surprised that you know what that is. 
However, yeah, so that's that's what we're gonna do. I like this. Yeah, suck, I idea. suck as literally everybody else except for Zinana. That's okay. Um, so you speak of that, but that so yeah, it's shall pretty, we? It's a pretty good record right there. Shall we? Shall we start? This is competitive as well. Yeah. I'm gonna go to Marcus's as well. Bringing that up, perfect. Maybe he's like five games. He's literally played five games. Yeah. So, but look at his hero score and look at my own Zen. Hero rank infinity. Look at the score, the six thousand five hundred nine eighty nine. What's mine at? What does hero score even mean? Ooh, it's how hover much over the question mark. It's hover how over much the question mark. average score. Uh, competitive, competitive hero, hero based. score based on skill, games played, win rate, and hero stats. Exactly. Um, but look at the critical hits, man. Like, look at that bar. No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's not an audio show you have to say. Okay. okay. Look at that. Thirteen percent critical hits. That's in the top three percent. Perfect. Of players, like that's. Thank you, Mike. This season you're actually going positive. Um, fifty-seven percent win rate. I'm very impressed, to Thank be you. honest. Currently you're at Thank a twenty twenty-eight hundred Elo or fucking SR. I don't. Know. Yeah, I was at like twenty-five hundred like two days ago, bro. I had like a ten-game winning streak. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. I know. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Playing on the PSN. Apparently you played fifteen minutes ago. Right. Or... Like what is that? Like no, I didn't. I don't, I don't know. But uh, I don't know. Maybe it's someone's up screwed. to date. So it is. It is up, <laughs> apparently. Check your PlayStation app. <laughs> um, I see you play a lot of Zenyatta, play a lot of fucking Mercy. What's this Tracer doing here, sir? I, uh, if I have to play DPS, I play Tracer. Really? Yeah. One of those plubs? Yes. Look, Damn. my critical hits are not bad again. I don't know. Can you read it to me? So it's 8% critical hits as Tracer, which is in the top 7%. So, I mean, that, that's that's pretty good. I'm, my Ulims are really low. <laughs> like, everything is, yeah, really bad. Yeah. Yeah, I can see yeah, you're more I'm of a not, support player. So. I'm, as you can see, even on Mercy, look, look, objective kills, healing. Yeah, healing yeah. is is twelve k. He needs it. Yeah, damn. Um, Marcus, let's go over to your quick play. You only played five games this rank. Marcus, yeah, is I was that... shocked, but look, he's like four hundred seventy one best Orissa in quick play. Like, damn, like is that in Canada or is that the world or like what what is it's this? It's probably story? on PSN. Like, where's that ranking? Uh, Do you know? I couldn't tell you. No, All right, cool. Earth. Nice. Um, Marcus 90, is at 19, Marcus is at 300 three hundred three thousand 300 3000 SR I was going to say ELO again but don't mind me um, so he's beat you there I win profile picture is Winston so he beat you there as well um, I win <laughs> I don't know what this is but Boston Uprising um, boo yeah boo <laughs> nice um, play a lot of Winston there sir with average 29.66 ELIMS you're insane Marcus you're insane um <laughs> Uh, uh, Arissa, 471 on PSN, I'm assuming. Um, let's see here. You actually, you're actually pretty good at this, this hero, eh? Damn. You have over, a day, you have about a day played. God, I look at this time and I'm like, I could have done something. Else. <laughs> yeah. Hang on, hang on. Take this in though. He has a day played on Junkrat. It's uh, more. It's Winston. more. It's more. It's probably, yeah, it's probably like 40. Hang on, hang on. Hey, no, it's like 50 One, something. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six heroes have a day played. Take that in. And then you got another hero 20, another hero 20, 17. 20 hours in May? You're like <laughs> oh the devil, my dude. Oh god, dude. That's horrid. I'm very sorry for all the players. Honestly. But yeah, I think I think this will be good. I was playing Winston before. It was cool. Yeah. He was. That's cool. You were. I remember. I do remember this. But I think this will be a cool little little competition between you two. Um, we're going to compare your stats when the season starts. Um, see how far you guys go. Do your placements match and then it starts. Okay, so it's after them ten placements match. What is it? The highest SR after? It's the highest, like it's overall stats. So highest, highest SR. Um, I'm gonna more or less do like a, a format, like a chart, like for who gets the points. So um, SR average. Um, we're gonna choose. Let's let's say. Do you have four heroes in common? Wait, wait. Before we before we talk about this, how the hell do you have five point two seven medals as Junkrat? That's average. Yeah, but there's only five medals in the game. Exactly. Which means they're all gold, usually. But then it'd be five, not 5.27. Well, <laughs> I don't understand. My uncle works at Nintendo. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> Mike just facepalmed. Um, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to explain it better um, in, the, in the following weeks. But I'm going to basically make a chart um, with different things. You're going to get ranked on a few different categories. I want to know as well. Um, I'm going to go through your stats here, see which heroes you have in common... Playing like you both we don't play. Really play a lot of. Uh, well, we're gonna see. We're gonna see, and then based on those two heroes, we're gonna see who is the better. It's probably Zen. Honestly. For example, Zen main. 
I don't so, know, do you play Roadhog a lot, Marcus? And this might challenge you to actually play new heroes, sir. Both of no, you. No, I never. Yeah, this is going to challenge you. And you know what? You know what? I'm going to give you every every season one hero that you need to... And I will say no. Quote, unquote, master. Yes. <laughs> I will say no. Yes. No. That is the way I play Zenyatta or Mercy. No, That's that is it. the way you have to... You have to challenge like, your like, game. I don't even see Mercy on here. Like, where's to, Mercy? Yes. You have to challenge your game, sir. Mercy, you suck. Second to last year, hopefully. <laughs> So you, you, you both need to challenge your game, okay? That's the way this is going to work. I'm liking this idea. Um, yes. I'm just going to play Zenyatta. Yeah, well, it's you're going to lose then. What can I tell you? Oh, oh well. Hmm, I don't know. I lose everything else. <laughs> I don't know. Just, just pick Widowmaker. <laughs> no, I'm going to go through it and make an actual, like... No, he's going to pick Hanzo. Oh, boy. No, Hanzo honestly, like, they're changing him. Yeah. Getting rid of that scatter arrow. Thank God. Thank I God. hate it. Nah, feel, people are just bitching. Scatter is literally the worst thing in the freaking world. It's meant to be like a burst damage. Yeah, but it's stupid burst damage. It's How? not fun when he just shoots you with it. And like Hanzo just as a character is He's so a sniper. Dumb. Yeah, but he doesn't even Racist. aim though. He just goes. Oops. Pretty sure you, you have to aim. Oops. And then, sure when Oliver Queen's throwing out them bows and arrows, he knows exactly where he's aiming. Yeah, especially yeah, when he's like, Hanzo doesn't. Standing over them people. People who are playing like, as Hanzo don't know. He's like, you failed this city. Like, like, Hanzo's over there, you, you failed this payload. Every time I die because of a Hanzo shot, I watch the kill cam, and it's just him going like this. Not aiming, just throwing the arrows in there, and then one happens no. to hit my head. And it's like, I, feel like no, I don't like that they got rid of it. They're getting rid of it. Now simple geometry means nothing. Simple geometry. I, I got that, that trophy. I don't know what that means. Oh, it's a trophy. Okay, that's cool. You gotta kill two people. Let's get it. And well, also, that's like one of his catchphrases, simple geometry. And the whole reason is because of how, like, the air, the scatter arrow just bounces off a bunch of walls, and you're supposed to, like, it's all these, like, play on words, but, like, measuring and angles and shit <laughs> like that. Geometry, you know, math, shapes, I don't science. Know, you're pretty good at that. You, maybe I'm, you should play I'm, Hanzo. I'm kind of, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just vomit in my mouth. That's okay. Well, anyway... Yo, um, I had a Torbon attack the other day, and it's just like, what are you doing with your life, man? I don't know. That's just sad. Hang on, can we go take a look at my stats here real quick? This is my Xbox Live. Maybe you know, what, maybe I, when I get my PlayStation, I'll play Overwatch with you, to, with you peeps. Who knows though? No, he won't. He won't. I might. You never know. Why do you play Widowmaker? I, I used to play a lot of Widowmaker actually. Yeah, you suck. Look at that. I I, I was horror, dude. Like, look at the, look at those no, elims. I didn't, I didn't play too fucking Bash and I had to get sixty minutes, dude. <laughs> That was when the was essential. Roadhog, <laughs> four hours, dude. Four hours. Don't worry about me. I like your hook accuracy, forty-eight point five. It's pretty shit, to be honest. Um, Xbox I know, I was Live. Fun of you. Yeah, I know. Look at this. Fucking yeah, right here. Actually, that's pretty consistent considering forty-eight point four, and then what's what was it, forty-eight point five? Damn. What are mine? Do you want to see mine? No. Because <laughs> you know it's gonna be higher if you go one. No, look. I got 4.20 medals yeah, on Winston. You have 8 medals on Roadhog. That makes no sense. No. I'm triggered. I got... So this is the way this works. Maybe got, it counts it, gold, no, silvers, and bronze. It's average... Oh, so if you got gold, it's, it's, it's 3. It's average 2.5 gold medals, average 3.47 gold uh, silver, and then averaged 2.29. That makes absolutely... I don't understand what they're calculating. No, it makes more, it it makes makes more sense. No sense. No, on, wait, on average, Marcus gets... Didn't. On average, Marcus gets 2.27 gold medals with Junkrat. And he gets on average one silver and uh, one gold. I mean one bronze with with uh, junk rat. And then you, for example, with Zen, on average you get. To be fair, this is competitive. This is competitive. Yeah, it's gonna go to quick play. play. Sure. Thank you. Look at that roadhog. Don't look at mercy. <laughs> on average, you get two point one eight. Look at that gold. hook accuracy. I still have a better hook accuracy than <laughs> By me. point four percent. Yeah, fucking off yourself. But yeah, I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. Um, considering, so we're gonna get on that. Um, when the new season starts, what is it, season like eight, seven? A season eight ones right now, so the next one will be season nine. Season nine, okay. Cool. Unless they pull Microsoft and just go straight to ten. Yeah, fucking all right. Microsoft <laughs> and Apple. And Apple. Yeah, <laughs> but so I, when season nine starts, dude, we're going to have this competition. So we got two games going on this uh, this podcast now. We got the game that has no name, the MPD guessing game, Thing. and we got our. Um, Fuck, I gotta figure out a name for this. Our game Overwatch that has no name too. Hmm? A game that has no name too. Yeah, fuck, honestly. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, we'll I'll think of a name, and uh, you guys will hear more about it, because these guys love Overwatch, so I'm gonna fucking put them to the test. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you guys so much for listening. Email us uh, at nothingbutgamespodcast at gmail.com if you have any concerns, complaints, just wanna say hello. 
you want to show us your stats, email us your uh, overbuff, and we'll take a look and criticize you. I mean, we'll take a look and see what's going on maybe next podcast. Who knows? And we'll just laugh at you because we'll be better than you. Probably not. Let's be real. Touche. Right. And, uh, yeah, take care. Have a wonderful night, wonderful day. If you're from Ontario, have a wonderful family day. Um, yeah. Jesus Christ. See you later. I'm from Saskatchewan.